You're listening to Tiger Cats at the Half. Sold out crowd here at Tim Hortons Field enjoying 30 minutes of outstanding football. Started kind of slow, but boy, did we get a lot of action in that second quarter. Rain starting to fall here at Tim Hortons Field as the fans, though, certainly not dampened by the excitement. This is Tiger Cats at the half, presented by my insurance broker, Bubba O'Neill, along with Andy Fantuz. And like I, like I mentioned there, Andy, kind of a slow start in the first quarter, but things got heated up, certainly offensively for their Tiger Cats in the second quarter. Yeah, they did. They, they, they kind of got sparked by that, that pick six that Bo threw. There was really nothing going on for the Cats uh, offensively at all up to that point. And that was certainly uh, one of the key moments of the first half, of course, in a negative way. But at the same time, they, they drove the ball down right after that and put it in the end zone and have been pretty successful offensively since that point. Now, they, they have been helped with some, some uh, major fouls by the BC Lions. So they, they've gotten uh, the better, the, on the better side of the penalty department. And uh, but really, just that 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 pick six is really the difference in the game at the, up to this point. We talked about the field position and how important that would be. Uh, you got to say that BC certainly won that battle early, but you got to credit the Hamilton defense with three sacks already to start in that, especially in that first quarter, just to kind of slow down the progress. And instead of uh, I guess the Lions kicking touchdown or the getting touchdowns, they were kicking field goals. Yeah, the sacks, the QB pressure has been great by the Thai Cats all first half, pretty consistently. Now, the, the one thing that hasn't been a bright spot, and we talked about this before the game, was was that tackling. I mean, there's been receivers open in the short area, which is which is okay if you can rally up and make the tackles. But there's been a number of times where broken tackles have led to first downs that which have extended drives, which have kept the defense on the field and not giving Bo Levi and this offense a chance to work. So there's some some pros with the, uh, some bright sides with that QB pressure, but certainly the tackling and just the aggressiveness overall, um, minus the defensive line, I think needs to pick up. The linebackers and the defensive backs need to, to come up and put a little, put a little more pressure on those receivers. It's going to be tough now with Richard Leonard going down and now Nick Cross going down. We're going to see what they're going to do at that field corner position uh, because they don't have a lot of de defensive backs on the roster, period, tonight. But they only did dress six here in this situation, you know, right? And you certainly don't count for those kind of injuries to happen. I think the big problem with the BC Lions is in the sense that they've got these uh, talented wide receivers and, and even, and, and even the, the ability for VA to be so mobile that these guys are big targets. So... This secondary is going to be under some stress, but I'm sure the defensive, uh, set, I guess the linebackers, they're all going to have to chip in with some, I guess, some uh, coverage, I would presume. Yeah, it, it's no time to be tentative, that's for sure. It, it doesn't matter if it's your first game or your or your 50th game. you got to step up the aggressiveness and just let players play and let their let their preparation uh, take over, let, let their athleticism take over and, and trust, trust what got them to this point. That's their coaching, that's their practice, that's their film work. Just let them go out there and play and, and react to what's happening instead of overthinking it and being soft and, and letting the play come to you. You want to always be the hammer and not the nail in these kind of situations. One thing, like you said, that did is certainly helping out the Tiger Cats is their discipline. They have been very disciplined. And you really could look at the BC Lions team and say that, you know what, they've committed to maybe too many fouls. That's one thing Rick Campbell, I'm sure he's going to remind his team. Yeah, they're going to definitely have to clean it up because that's really uh, – if you if you include that pick six, this this could be uh, you know a, a really lopsided game right now. If it wasn't for those penalties that have extended the tight catch drives and led to touchdowns, and uh, in, in, in they got to also protect their their quarterback. But uh, I mean honestly, the Hamilton defensive line and front seven have been doing a great job of making it confusing for Vernon Adams Jr. and that BC Lions um, uh, offensive protection scheme. So. Uh, Hamilton's got to keep that up and just just tighten it up a bit and not give up those flat routes and when they have a chance to make the tackle they got to be able to bring them down this is uncharacteristic for these cats one of the outstanding features we have on Tiger Cats at the half presented by my insurance broker is our alumnus of distinction and we go back some years 2006 2007 
Joe on armor, like it is amazing to see again. I, I continually say that in, in this segment. You guys are keeping taking care of yourself. I mean, you look like you could ready go in there and stuff someone on third and one. I appreciate that, but you know, uh, uh, one thing about that age, we don't heal the same. It takes a little <laughs> bit more time now, so uh, I definitely try to stay as fit as possible. <laughs> Yeah, you, you definitely hit me a few times in, uh, in, in our, when we've crossed paths over the years. And uh, I, I was going to say the same thing, Bubba. You, look, you still got it. it was out. Where, does, uh, where does football live in your life? I, I know you coached a little bit, and, and, and you're working with, uh, with, with high school, and you did some college. Tell us a little bit about that. I mean, yeah, I, I, I tried my hand at, at coaching, uh, primarily college level. I, I don't, I'm one that I, I really don't have a, a lot of regrets or want to have a lot of regrets. So I wanted to experience coaching at the college level. Um, I tried the University of Toledo. It was a, we had an amazing season. We were uh, able to play in the Bahama Bowl that year. I was the quality control on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, but after that year, I realized college coaching is not for me. 11 hours a day is not for me. Um, and so, <laughs> it's a grind. Right, it's definitely a grind. Uh, so with that rock process, I definitely um, enjoyed the experience um, of knowing that I gave it a shot. I tried it. Uh, but I definitely enjoy coaching at the high school level. Well, you're here tonight with Shemaine, your wife, and, uh, and you, uh, you bounced around to a few teams in this league and, and also dipped your toe in the NFL. What, what makes Hel Hamilton special, uh, a special part of your journey? Again, Hamilton is very, I'm from Toledo, Ohio, uh, very blue collar, um, hard nosed, hard nosed citizens. We grind, we work hard, we play hard, and that's exactly what Hamilton is, right? And so um, when I got here, it was it was very similar to being at home. The people, the community, um, and, and, and that's what that's what I love most about it. We didn't have the facilities that they have now, unfortunately. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, it's nothing like seeing like you can see the fans appreciate it, and, and I'm I'm glad they have it. So I I, I definitely commend the community for uh, for building this this beautiful facility. You didn't like Tim. You didn't like Iverwin. Not so much. <laughs> Not so much. Not hey, it was so a much. great place to play. It just, uh, just to be around 24-7, it, it, it needed an improvement. Let's it definitely needed improvement. Yeah. But I think, you know, uh, with that improvement, I think success is ahead. Um, the coaching staff, I play with a number of these guys. I respect them on a high level. Just their football IQ is amazing. I'm speaking to Mark Washington primarily. Uh, Coach O, I played against while he was at Toronto. Uh, and I know they are football minds. So it's just awesome as a player when you have coaches that have played, right, because they can empathize with you on those, on those tough days. They empathize with you when you make mental mistakes, and they understand the things that it takes to recover. And so I definitely expect success um, for Hamilton. Well, I know you touched a lot of lives, uh, both on the field and off the field. I saw you uh, when, I first, when you first came up to our set here uh, talking with um, some big cat, cat fans, Barb and Steve, and I understand that they, you guys, they emailed you a few days ago, making sure you guys were going to hook up. And uh, just what, what's it like to, to come back to that after what is that, 16 years? Yeah, like yeah. That? But hey, so you know what, Steve hit me on LinkedIn, and I, I, I definitely made sure I had a chance to touch base with them when I come back for a great cup. I'm gonna, we're gonna go to dinner. Um, but that's that's what football is about. It's about enjoying the process, enjoying the people that you are able to impact their lives. And, it, and that shows the impact when they remember you 15, 16 years later. And so it's just a beautiful thing. And, you know, and it's a, I'm appreciative of it. You, well, you did, sorry, you, you didn't play some for, like really successful teams, 4-14, four 3-15, and, 14, three and 15, But I went and looked back at some of those rosters. I mean, I remember you playing the middle for a long, long time there. Tim Cheatwood, Rob Hitchcock, Belly, James Cotton. You played with some real characters. Yeah, I did. You know what? And I still get it, get the opportunity to speak to those guys. Keep it. I live down the street from Cotton. Uh, Cheatwood I just spoke to not too long ago. Baron Simpson. All of those players that when you come to the CFL, it's not about the dollars per se. It's about the relationships. So as, as we were just talking about Andy with, with, the, with the fans, that relationship also extends to the players because it's a grind to be up here. And so when you're away from your family, all you have is your teammates. If you lose a loved one, or if you're in a, 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 you have a tragedy at home, you have to appreciate those guys that, that support you in that process. And those are your teammates. Yeah, well, well said. And we're getting short on time here. And uh, uh, we were talking about tackling. And you know a little bit about tackling. What? I'm sure you've been in a, a locker room that had some struggles on, on, on certain days. What, what do you say at halftime to come back and kind of clean that up in the second half? 
I think primarily just remember, guys, what we're in it for. They, they, uh, Hamilton's playing for something, right? We're playing for something. And everything, it means everything to not have self-inflicted wounds. And missed tackles are self-inflicted wounds. Penalties are self-inflicted wounds. But when games are on the line and you're talking about being able to be prepared to play playoffs and more or less prepared to play home field at the Grey Cup, you know, you have a lot on the line. So we have to remember that when we go into battle. Alumnus of distinction. Former Tiger Cat, Joe One Armour, always a pleasure. It's great to see you, number 32. Great, great time to have you. Enjoy the seeing your people. Tiger Cats down 20 to 14. Lots of football to come. RJ and Luke are ready. Joining us on streaming live at TigerCats.ca and across the Tiger Cats Audio Network. Keep it